All right, guys, what's up? We are back with uh, a little football talk. You've seen these uh, these delinquents before. We have the Michael Spillane and the one and only Craig, the man Brooks, the dad, oh, the father, nice. the Faja. Uh, so we are going to break down uh, some beliefs in the upcoming football season, and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna talk about it. We all have some drinkies, so we're gonna. This is to you, Mr. Brooks. And your your new little one, congratulations! Thank you. And uh, so also to uh, me, I'm drinking uh, Jameson ginger beer and uh, lemonade. Wonderful. Yep. Spillane's got PBR, PBR. positioning yep. himself as the donkey of the show already, <laughs> putting himself I'm, down by his got, choices. It, it got to the point last year where I was an honorary Bills fan, so I was just jumping into tables, you know? Like, you might also, have. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Pat as well, uh, closing on a house. So, got a, you guys both being super adults, and I'm just over here like, I'm going to drink the cheapest beer I can. So. I love it. <laughs> I respect that. It's okay. I'm going to be moving to Coors Light in a minute. So. Way classier. I actually like that jump. I like that jump. I really well, do. I think that levels you up. The only That's reason that I'm doing economic that, jump. I bought a uh, a new beer that I haven't had yet. It's just um, it was warm at Publix, so I'm waiting for it to get cold. I got a Patagonia, so yeah, yeah uh, I like Patagonia. I like Craig's Patagonia. Patagonia guy. I've, yeah, I like, Bogan. have you tried it? The Pilsner. Yeah, I got the Pilsner. I haven't tried That's it. That's the one. Still. Yeah. That, oh, oh um, man. Did tell? Uh, I saw I saw the the wifey there. Not not full, you know what I mean. Tell her to yeah. throw one in the freezer for you, bro. I will, get a freezy. Well, I mean, I'm gonna need another beer in like three minutes, so okay. I'll go I'm out. Switch to it. OBP after. No, I have one more gentleman Jack and then OBP. I got goals. <laughs> OBP is a good beer, man. I got. Sorry, this goals. is actually a beer podcast now. So. We're just gonna talk about booze the entire time. So well, it's yeah. important that, the, that that people know that we want to get drunk. I think that that's what the, the, they just if they don't know that there's a goal here. Craig is on a podcast. That means there's gonna be alcohol. That's all that means. I, I think it's the only way I likes to do it. <laughs> the, the other thing is to remember is that Craig and I are, are good friends. We actually enjoy each other's company quite a bit. But if we're drinking, we hurl insults at each other profusely. Um, Most and they're also a place of love. Most of what you said was so. true. Most of what you said was true. You stay puffed marshmallow man, bleeding <laughs> from the neck. You weird out with a haircut looking motherfucker. <laughs> I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna try to bring it. <laughs> Everything you say is dumb. Hey, by the no, way, you were great it. in the show, Monk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Tony Shaloub? What's happening? I don't understand. I am far more attractive than that individual. You are far less attractive. Than the the Michelin Man, which is what I see right now on my screen, <laughs> just a series of cylinders of your body. <laughs> so I, uh, the, this is the, yeah, Pat. This is one last one before I let you football it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I took Let's your go. recommendation. You had me watch. Well, you didn't have me do it, but it was in my mind that you said Big Hero Six was a good movie. He looks like. The fucking Baymax, Baymax without the gear on, just a, just a fluid <laughs> squish. It's okay, man. So on tonight's podcast, we have Craig Brooks and Baymax uh, making a surprise appearance. <laughs> he made me cry. the The Baymax is love, though. I do feel strongly for Baymax. He's just oh, yeah. Six is yeah, that's doughy. right. I'll make you cry with my doughy ass. <laughs> People love your dough, bro. That's true. It's true. It's true. It's factual. Big so facts. I want to I want to go out with a Craig Brooks hot take first before we get started breaking down some draft, talking about some picks. Brooks, what do you got? What's your hot take for the season for the draft? What do you got? Okay, I know how a lot of people feel about the upcoming draft. You know I'm a Dolphin fan, and we're gonna get into that. My hot take is this: Joe Burrow, not the best quarterback in the draft, not even on my first five picks i don't see it i don't get it i know i know he's gonna go to cincinnati i think it's a miss i think we're looking at andy dalton 2.0 more than we're looking at the guy who just won a title i get it he he had one good season one 
Was it a phenomenal season? I would agree. 60 touchdowns, all the 73.9% completion, like no interceptions. Not enough body of work for me to trust. I think we're in a bust situation. They even share the first two letters, B-U, bust. I love it. I love it. That's a hot take. What are, you, what are your feelings about that, Mike? <clears throat> I mean, I uh, I could definitely see where he's coming from on that. I don't personally see him as a bust. I think that uh, Joey Connors totally knocked the pro playing quarterback into him uh, in uh, what was it? The Peach Bowl? It's Peach Bowl? Yeah. Uh, Joey Connors, UCF, absolutely laid out Joe Burrow next year. Congratulations, he's a superstar. He did. Um, so it's kind of like a like Mike situation where like he just got instead of finding magic shoes, he got the shit knocked out of him, and now he's an amazing quarterback. Um, so I, I don't think he's going to be a bust, <laughs> at least to the degree that you do, uh, just because of the fact that if AJ Green's healthy, he's got AJ Green, Joe Mixon in front of him. I think he's he can make things happen. So um, I don't I see where you're coming from. Cause he definitely has Dwayne Haskins syndrome and the fact that Dwayne Haskins had one really good year. Um, I just don't see it myself. So there are so, so many, sorry, go ahead, Pat. W- one quarterback that comes to mind for me, one good season at his age, you know, coming into the draft at 24 years old, Brandon Whedon drafted by the Cleveland Brizounds. And he was supposed to be a mature player coming in, had an also had a great completion percentage, but was terrible. Wait, Joe so, Burrow's 24? Joe Burrow's 24 Ooh. years old. Don't the, like the that. The pro game, it, it's not good. It's not good. It's you. It, here's the thing. Uh, part of why I'm saying bust also is not just that I think he's not going to lead. Well, well, okay. So I don't think he's going to lead like the Cincinnati Bengals to multiple playoff appearances or an eventual title. So could he come in the league and have like a okay career? Well, well yeah. The, the, the proof is in if you could just be – medium if you could be like the 17th best person at that position in the nfl you can play for 15 years we've got proof of that but i think that the bust comes in that the cincinnati bengals are going to look back like so many teams do and see the kind of athletes they could have had whether it's chase young isaiah simmons whether it's some of these like potentially generational talent at a different position qb gets too much i think draft love when that's not where all the besties have come from. You know what I mean? That number one spot is what I mean. Yeah. So I'll say Joe Burrow, 23 years old, birthday in December. So he's coming up on 24. Okay. Um, kind of, it's still kind of an older quarterback and only played one year. It's, and, and that LSU team was stacked. I think everybody that's can agree that that team. concerns me. One season. Make all not right. a, a superstar. Last last question on this take, Brooks. Who's your number one QB on the board? I'm torn. Uh, I got the the Oregon guy strikes me, but I'm like interested in and in, I'm falling in love with love. You know the Utah State guy. Mm-hmm. I, I think that there's some the he's more in the mold of what we're seeing in the NFL right now. A little bit more mobile, can make a little bit stranger throws. There's value in that. Pat Mahomes taught us that. Lamar Jackson is teaching us that these guys are changing the face of the game. So that prototypical 90s and early 2000s quarterback, I'm not sold that that's what teams should be going for right now. Look at what just won the title and and is shaking it up. Pat Mahomes is not a prototypical pocket passer who's immobile. He's the exact opposite. He makes anything and everything happen. And I think Burrow is good at a lot of the check boxes of what you look at a quarterback and you're like, okay, he's got to have poise. He's got to have leadership. He's got to have these intangible things. And I still want a guy like Pat Mahomes that can move the ball over to his left hand and throw it for a first down, like just weird. Are you athletic? And to me, he is not the most athletic. So I would take, I'll just, I'll just say it. I'll take love or Tua. I mean, I have strong feelings about Tua. We'll get to that for Miami because I have a hope, but he gets hurt frequently, but but I can get past that. Love it. Love it. Spillane, hot take. Hit me with it. <clears throat> so, sorry, Craig. Um, my hot take is that I think this year the Dolphins are going to be the Giants of last year's draft. You guys are going to make decisions that are just going to piss off your fan base, and you're going to be left unhappy and unfulfilled at the end because you're still going to have a losing season. So, and that that's not is, that. That is... 
That is as misguided as donating to Trump 2020 campaign. That is a <laughs> terrible, terrible thought because you're so off. We are going to take these three first round picks and do a magical concoction of a quarterback, an offensive lineman, and a running back. We are going to get cream of the crop situations. We're going to get one of the top three QBs. We're going to get a very strong offensive lineman, and I'll talk about when we get to it, the one I hope, the one who outruns receivers and tight ends, and we will hopefully get a running back. And why do I say that is because Jordan Howard instills no confidence in me, sir. That's fair. See, this is what I fully expect to happen. Uh, just because of the fact that it seems like you guys have been teasing this idea. Um, I think you guys are going to draft Justin Herbert instead of who you want, which is going to be Tua. You guys I want are... Tua so bad! I, you might be right about that. You might be right about the Herbert would be... I would not because be as happy. Okay, It's the exact same thing that the Giants were doing. The Giants were tossing out the fact that we want Haskins, we want Haskins, and then three days prior to the draft, what's the talk? The Giants are going to draft Daniel Jones at six. And then, you know, here we are. Granted, but Daniel Jones you... had a far better year than Dwayne Haskins did but we yes. were all on Pat is a Giants fan as well so he can vouch right. for me we were all on the Dwayne Haskins train that's what we wanted I to happen that. but are you mad that I think Jones is 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 doing well I'm behind Jones as that I'm as Pat said earlier I'm a tangential Giants fan they're never going to come one for me because my dad likes him I can if the Dolphins aren't oh. relevant and they're not I can support the Giants Jones looks exciting with Saquon at his side and any receiving core there. That's a weakness for the team. But like, yep. what is wrong with Jones? Now that you guys have seen Jones, are you still upset about the pick? Are you, I mean, maybe I could, you could be, I don't know. No, I'll jump in here first, just because I know Pat specifically did not watch last year because he was so pissed at the Giants organization. Um, <sighs> Literally no football. When granted, I was, I, I was shocked. And I was hurt at first, but then it was like, hey, he's my quarterback. I'm going to watch. I grew to enjoy watching him play. He still has things that he needs to work on, primarily ball security. That's his big flaw right now. Um, but I, I, I do like him, have... and I'm rooting for him. The big thing is we need to keep him upright, which is where I'm hoping our draft ends up. O-line. Yeah. O-line. You know? There's a lot so... of good O-line talent this year. But with that being said, I, I think you guys, I think you guys are gonna potentially pick the the quarterback that your fan base doesn't want, which you've already kind of proven that that's how you feel right now. Is that they might draft yeah. Herbert instead of Tua? I, I, I do think feel that, that way. you guys are reaching if you draft a running back in the first round, which is what we did. Um, in my mind, with Dexter Lawrence, everyone thought Dexter Lawrence was a reach where we drafted him. Um, and then I think the other thing is you, the third player that you guys draft could be a flop. The offensive lineman that's really popular where you guys are drafting, I think 24 is your last pick. The offensive mm -hmm. lineman that's really popular around there is uh, Jacobs from Houston. And I, I just hope we go O-line before that. I hope it goes QB, OL, and then maybe as a backdoor, I'll say that as a, as a Dolphin fan, if they got a QB and two linemen in the first round, I still call that a success. In fact, possibly even more successful than a, a jump on a running back. The only reason I said running back is we do have that massive draft equity. That third pick in the first round with multiple picks in the second round changes yeah. things up because it means you can give a little. Like if you thought uh, the best running back, whether you thought that was Dobbins, whether you thought it was the guy from LSU, it doesn't matter. If you thought he wasn't going to be there for you at two, but you had three picks in the first round, you grab him. But if you want to protect Tua, you get Tua. And I think Tua could go before five. I, I, it could happen. So a lot of – the Lions are talking trade. Everybody's talking trade. I think it's just the bulk, the BS of like a draft trying to get people off their game, especially because it's going to be virtual. But I can see what you're saying where they would miss Go Herbert, which could derail everything. But they could get back some of that credibility – if they get Herbert and two linemen, I think it almost kind of self-writes the ship because we're not good at picking quarterbacks anyway. So if we can just protect whoever the fuck it is, whether it's Fitzmagic, whether it's my my bar mitzvah boy who probably won't be on the team next year. I mean, well, <laughs> it's going to so be interesting to see the least. We're talking heavy Dolphins talk right now, and I'll I'll continue. Let's continue on with that. So Cincinnati, we feel like, is basically a lock to go Burrow, right? That's a that's a general unit unanimous decision. I think so. Unless, Which I wouldn't want them to do, but they're gonna. The only so, thing that's gonna make it not that way is if the Dolphins offer three first round picks for pick number one. So. 
which I, I there there's I'm not reading anything that supports that. It just they could do it, right? And they yeah. could make these weird splashy moves. I as a fan, I would get behind Burrow. I would buy the card, the rookie card, I would get a jersey. I would absolutely hate that. I would hate 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 that and I'd want to be wrong. I'd want to be proven wrong and he's the next Tom Brady, but we know that that's unlikely because the the chip on the shoulder is not there. I got to take a brief break and help. I hear my name being called for a diaper. So we'll, we'll jump over to you, Mike. Do you think that it is possible that Joe Burrow, not the number one pick, do you think Cincinnati takes Chase Young, who is the de facto number one prospect in this draft class? I mean, uh, from what I've been hearing, uh, obviously, I don't have NFL sources. I'm not going to pretend that. But uh, <laughs> from what I've been hearing from all the people that I follow um, is that everyone said that uh, NFL insiders looking at mock drafts, looking at analysis that's coming out because of the way that this draft is shaking out and the fact that it's virtual. There was no pro days. We had very little combine to look at. You couldn't fly people in for workouts. A lot of insider NFL folks have said that as far as the analysts go, Nobody has jack shit right. So in other words, we're all in for some significant surprises from what I wager. Um, so is there a possibility that Burrow doesn't go number one? Fucking absolutely. Um, do I still I was, think that they go I listened Burrow? To what, yes. Sorry. I, was, I actually was able to hear what you said because I took it mobile. And it's, it's interesting because you're kind of speaking to that something that we've never experienced as football fans and something none have, this draft is going to be so unique. It is more of a draft the, of our opinions than ever before. They've not seen enough of the, enough content. They didn't get to interview them the way they would have liked. They didn't get to run them through the pro days that they would have liked. Our opinions are fa- well, as fans are more relevant and on par with these guys than ever before. So for me, that's, that's the most exciting draft albeit I'm bummed that it has to be this way in this crazy time. I'm excited because like the insights we have are pretty close to what they have. And that makes it really unique and exciting to be like, take a flyer, man, flip that coin. Who's it going to be? You want to make that big splash or jump or big, those big reaches don't seem as dumb because what if you saw something on tape, you Belichick the moment he looked at tape and saw it a whole different way on a lot of people. Right. And yeah. There's an opportunity for teams. I, I'm going to say something that last year I didn't feel good about, but I'm starting to trust Flores more and more as, as a Dolphin fan. He's bringing in some vets from the Patriots, some guys that you wouldn't expect to come to the Dolphins, want to play for him. Maybe he learned not everything. You can't. But maybe he learned a thing or two from Belichick, and he's going to take on this draft that way, shore up the line, get us a few defenders, We're not winning the Super Bowl in 2020, but in a few years, you do the right moves in the draft. Belichick proved that. That's a Peyton proved it. A lot of them, a lot of these good coaches, the draft is everything. So Flores might have that. And forgive me, I don't even know who the hell the Giants coach is. Uh, Joe Joe Judge. Judge. That sounds bad. Sounds like a bad (laughs) name. I I don't like. I don't like the JJ. You probably don't like that. You don't like Joe Judge. We He's were, uh, a Patriot definitely, uh, definitely cast off and yeah. uh, an Alabama an Alabama coach as well. What, so what level? Wait a minute though. But what position did he have at those two places? Was he Specialty. assistant ball fucker? Like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what the, the, he was. Exactly what you said. He was assistant fucking ball fucker. He was special teams coach. Name a special teams coach that went on to great things. No, John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh. Which one? The one of the Ravens. Not the good one. He got an accidental title. I don't know. (laughs) I like Jim. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's fucking up Michigan, man. So let's say Cincinnati Cincinnati goes Burrow. Everybody's excited. He's an Ohio kid. Girlfriend from Cincinnati. Blah, blah, blah. Cinderella story. Washington's in a very interesting position. Dwayne Haskins, as Mike said, didn't light the world on fire last year. There's a lot of talent here at quarterback. You could entertain a move down. Chase Young is sitting there for you. They have holes along their offensive line. What do you do if you're the Redskins, Craig? You have got to consider actively a quarterback, but 
you can't take one. You invested a high pick, high-ish pick in Dwayne Haskins. He has the talent. You need so many things. You're the Washington Redskins. You have the worst owner in professional sports. At this Correct. point, you don't have the pressure. Yeah, yeah. You don't have the pressure of the pick one, and that's a good thing. That means you don't get that guy, right? So pick two is a valuable place to be here. It's for me. It's either Young or Simmons. You need a freak athlete on defense to build momentum. You know, defense wins championships. It's not just a a, a cliche. It's a fact. Is you need your your defense to give your offense a chance. The proof there is that there are strong defenses that have led very weak offenses to successful multi-year playoff runs. Lots of stuff like that in in the in the game of football. If you can have a linebacker or an end that makes a difference, a guy like I think some, what is it, Young and Simmons, they're multi-positional guys too on that defensive back where you've got guys going from end to linebacker to safety in certain packages. So now you, you've got a, a potential 10, 12-year versatile player. For me, Washington absolutely should go Simmons or Young. I'm, I'm a little torn there, but I know my one, two, three, only because I think Burrow is going to go to Cincinnati. I don't agree with it, but I think they will. It's some iteration of those three guys. So let's say Young's off the board here. Let's go to Detroit. Mike, do you trade down? The Dolphins, it, let's say Burrow's gone. Burrow's off the board. Washington goes Chase Young, which is often heavily mocked. So they have a choice to move down. Detroit, not at the point where you would think they need a quarterback. There's still a couple good years left in Matt Stafford, from what I would assume, from what I think a lot of people. He's yeah. got three, four good years left especially if they can keep him upright, do you trade down as the Lions and try and lure in a Miami, a Chargers, uh, maybe even uh, a Cleveland to go up and create some, some you know, friction? Cleveland. I don't think Cleveland's in love with Baker, but that's just me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would say that you're more likely to get a Jacksonville because I don't think that they think that Garden, Gardner Minshew is the answer. Um, even though he was fun while he lasted last year, I don't know if it's going to be uh, something that's there for longevity's sake. But um, no, if you're Detroit, you have to entertain trades. Um, from what I uh, I was reading yesterday is picks number three and number four are for sale. Um, mm -hmm. It might not happen until draft day, but if the Dolphins come in and offer six and 24, yeah, I take that trade all day. Um, yeah, because the the thing that's important to note here is the top need right now, I would say for them is a cornerback and Jeff Okuda. I don't see based on what's in what's on the board right now. I don't see a team in the top five taking him. So if they trade back to number six, they still get their guy that they were going to draft at number three. And then they got more draft capital on top of it. So uh, and this is similar I, to how I feel about the Giants. I think that if the right trade opportunity is presented to you, you have to take it. I hate, I hate what you're saying as much as I hate your sorry excuse for facial hair, but <laughs> that's not even why I, hate I acknowledge it. that. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, I know you do. I hate it differently though. I hate what you're saying because I believe, I believe you're correct. That's what I hate. I, I despise when I agree with you. The only thing I can say is Dolphins have five, so it's even juicier than what you were saying, six and 24. It's five and 24. So the, the, the Lions are so I, – I actually think the Lions should try to make that move, and I hate it. But if it got us Tua, my excitement for Tua is so high now, really came full circle there. Loved him, hated him, back on the love train, that I would argue that could be worth it if we still keep – um, that one, we still would maintain one additional first round pick. So we have three right now. Yes, if it takes two to get one, if it's all three for that position, I'm irate. I'm irate because then we lose the old lineman that a Tua would desperately need. We if if you pack if Tua is a part of the game, got to package him with an old lineman in that first round and another old lineman in the second round. Just just to, for protection purposes, the guy's a freak athlete. He can make every throw at least from what we've seen. And he's a goddamn winner. He's a winner. We need a winner, okay? We need someone who wins football games and he knows how to win them. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Tannehill probably, won football games this year. We, people do really well 
after they break up with us. It is the <laughs> fitness, you know, like in real life, you break up, you get real fit because you're out of a relationship. You're like, I got to get myself right. I was just with that slob of a person. I am moving on. I'm going to get tight. Well, fucking Kenyon Drake got tight. Fucking Minka's getting tight. He went to the goddamn Pro Bowl skills challenge. He's getting all this fun stuff. I'm like, God, why did you leave us? Minka was my guy. <laughs> Everyone that leaves. And then the one that was real cherry on, on the cake, because Ajaye did it to us the year before, like two years ago. Everyone that leaves. He, he got a goddamn Super Bowl out of it. They leave and they put on their fucking breakup flex. And Tannehill did it to 100. What, what was that contract that he got? It, it, they gave him they gave him a whole truck of money it and i want the guy to do well don't get me wrong anyone that played for the dolphins as long as he did gets that like love spot in a dolphin fan heart but i think he got like 140 million or something ridiculous 118 million with an average okay. guarantee of 29.5 he got aaron Rodgers ish money Rodgers is still a couple mil ahead of that but like what <laughs> i mean and I want him to do well. He's got an okay-looking wife. She looks like she's got expensive taste. That's fine. But he is not worth that, and that cripples the Titans. Yeah. Hardcore. So moving on from Miami, because we're about to jump to them again. Mike, I'm going to throw it back to you for the Giants. What is the what is the perfect formula for New York in this pick? I know you and I have talked about this. We, have. we both have similar lines of thought, and I'm going to give mine as well, but I want you to lead off first with what you think would be a win-win scenario here for New York. The biggest win that we could have is if we are to trade back with the Dolphins. Uh, granted, it's just moving up one pick, but we have to make them know how much interest there is, and then we could go ahead and get ourselves pick number five and 24. The biggest win that would be is because that means based on how things are shaking out right now, it looks like we get Isaiah Simmons and possibly an offensive lineman at 24, um, which is what we really need. Um, I, I think offensive line is our biggest need. I think based on the way that the draft is this weird and different draft process we're having this year. Um, I think that the likely pick for us is going to be Jedrick Wills just because of familiarity sake. Um, and he's one of the top tackles available. So I don't think that that's a bad pick by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I think the best scenario would be a trade back with the Dolphins to get a second pick in the first round. That way we could still get a top defender and a top offensive lineman. The other thing that I saw on CBS Sports, which I know you and I discussed this, 100% a situation that I would not mind. And Craig, I would like to hear what you think about this too is in order to make it work, the Giants would have to rescind the franchise tag on, um, uh, what's his face? Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, that's it. We would rescind the franchise tag on Leonard Williams. What we would do is we would go ahead and trade our fourth pick for number nine with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They would go ahead and give us the ninth pick and Yannick Ngakwe, who we would pick up his franchise tag instead. That gives us a pass rusher, which we need, and then get us a top 10 offensive lineman, which I think is going could potentially still be Jedrick Wills at that point. So uh, ideally, I think that's my favorite scenario because this is a very, um, this is actually a pretty weak class as far as edge rushers go. So I think getting a proven NFL level edge rusher and still getting a first round offensive lineman pick would be the best possible scenario for the Giants, uh, obviously, if it could happen. So no go ahead, way Pat, they we'll... execute that well. No, <laughs> that's masterful. What you just said was a masterstroke. That that team has proven they will not do that. Go, I, I can't wait to hear if Pat has a, even a, a stronger move. So, Brooks, I'll ask you before I, I give you my move. Does Miami trade up one spot? Do, do they trade up one spot in order? Only if. <clears throat> go ahead. In, in order to to secure, uh, you know, acquire the quarterback that they're looking for. Here's how I see that happening. If they, if three, if three doesn't grab Detroit, meaning or Detroit, whoever they move with, doesn't grab Tua, and let's say the Miami Dolphins want Tua, it's a little bit of me wanting him. If three comes and goes and it's not Tua and he's there at four, if the Giants played their cards right, because I think Mike is dead on that them getting five and 24 would be a massive boon. That'd be so sweet. They would have to do a bit of poker playing and a bit of lying 
to who was trying to come into the four to make Miami make that deal. And they've got, what, 10 minutes to do that. From what I understand, they're not changing the time. Of, I yeah. don't believe of so. Who, I don't know. It, it would be a it would be a very smooth move, and it could happen, but it couldn't be New York is what I'm getting at. It couldn't be them just standing pat and saying, well, Dolphins will think we're going to take a quarterback. We, we I don't think they would think that. They would have to be positioning and playing that a team with real need is is biting, is chomping. Are you sure you don't want this? It's how I would play it. Settlers of Catan style, like wheat and sheep <laughs> here. Like, I got to play my – what I want. I want – the wheat, but I want to make you think I want the sheep. That if the Giants can execute that, they can hoodwink the Dolphins into trading up one spot when the Giants were never going to take their guy. Yeah, uh, my my scenario that I I tossed to Mike, and I think it's it's my favorite, is a trade with Vegas because I do not think that their head coach is in love with with the Carr brother, the one that isn't important. Um, David and they not trade. <laughs> Yeah, they're both stupid. They're nothing. Vegas trades the 12th and the 19th first round pick to move up to four. And then they have their pick of every quarterback not named Joe Burrow. And then I think the Giants at 12 go either, depending on what's left on the board, I don't think Isaiah Simmons makes it to 12. But if by chance he's there, you obviously take Isaiah Simmons and then grab an offensive lineman at 19. uh, Or what you do is you grab an offensive lineman at 12 and I love any round one wide receiver. Mike and I talked about rugs out of Alabama and who was the wide receiver that was most noticeable in the Super Bowl this year, Tyreek Hill. You know what Tyreek Hill is a former track star speedster. And I think that that adds a whole nother level to the giants game where they can do a double reversal with Saquon and Jones and rugs. And you know, this guy runs what a four, two, a four, three, like, Adding that he, offensive element to your team is insane. He was one of the few people that we actually got to see at the combine, and he ran a four two eight, and was mad about it because he knows He's he can a run fast faster boy. than that. He's so very sorry, fast. anyone that speed runs is good. Speed is, is good. I'm gonna tell you though, speed is good, but has gotten teams like the Raiders. I know you're not talking about the Raiders in that circumstance, but. Got the Raiders in trouble. Darius Hayward Bay, Darius Hayward Bay broke yeah. the yep. yeah he he broke the machine. It was like a four two something. It was low, and and he's not the only one. the The speedster only doesn't encapsulate Tyreek Hill. He's more than that. And I hope you're right about that guy. For me, to just I I think I'd rather have some of. There's a few wide receivers that they're like they are touchdown mavens. That I think Justin Jefferson. Every, like, five catches of his was a touchdown. One of the guys from Bama, every six of his was a touchdown. So there's something to be said. Okay, there you go. Like, these guys are like magnets for touchdowns, and that means they know how to score. The NFL level, that has such importance as well. Like, you can't wilt in the red zone. And there are certain guys that the red zone becomes kryptonite to them, and you're useless for what we're trying to do here, which is put points on the board. Okay, so we're at pick number five, Miami. Cincinnati goes Burrow. Washington goes Young. Detroit goes Okuda. No trade downs. The Giants decide they're going to go with Jedrick Wills. Miami Dolphins on the clock. Do you run up and just hand in? Are you are you typing so quickly that you want to a tug of Iloa that that the the keyboard breaks or is that just a lock for you at this point? No one knows how to say his name, but I think Pat practiced it like six times, right? Probably. He definitely practiced Something like it. that. Mike, his before just, he called, his wife was just in the mirror, just Tug of Iloa, like, looking Tug at Pat. No, Tug of Iloa. She's, a, Tug of Iloa. she's a teacher. She fucking flashcarded it for him earlier tonight. He's like, "I'm babe, babe. It's Taga, Taga Vaga, Taga, Taga. Fuck, fuck. Flashcard me, babe. Flashcard me. Billy Madison. It. Billy Madison. The whole thing. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Pat, you Hip-hop were looking at the camera. <laughs> I wasn't. No, we Pat just saw Craig to enjoy that. Testicles. <laughs> I, Billy, I did a full Billy Madison. I wanted you to tag a Viga, tag a Vulia, tag a, tag a, I want him on my fucking team up. <laughs> that is correct. So two is your pick at five. That would it be, would are you concerned about the up. injury at all? No, because the here's the thing. Should we, let's look at some of the finest quarterbacks in the game. You, you, and you know, my personal favorite from the eight people that would have listened to this last year. I love Peyton Manning. 
He won a Super Bowl after neck surgery. Uh, Tom Brady is someone I respect. Multiple surgeries. Um, Drew Brees should have been a goddamn dolphin, but due to a rotator cuff thing, he went to New Orleans. We had him, Pat. We, we fucking had him. had him. He won his <laughs> Super Bowl in Miami, but that's not the point. <laughs> so bad it was so bad that's just like tim duncan and the magic i don't know if you know that story but i can't i we almost had tim duncan as well orlando my two teams whiffed on forever legacy players forever yeah. breeze is a forever legacy player so but what i was getting at is we can name a lot of guys that have gotten hurt at the quarterback position it's all of them okay now is it great that he got hurt young no but i saw frank gore his knee turned into putty in the national championship, and he went on to have a – you could argue his career was quite successful, okay, in its longevity and in its – yeah, okay. So if we can agree there, an injury or two, and I think uh, two has had two um, that are of concern, we're in a high-tech, big-money medical scenario here. They, If they invest in that line, he's just as at risk as any other guy – Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, that moves and that can do what he does. He has a, a a talent pool available to him that some of these quarterbacks they're not even dipping in that. They're in a whole they're in a whole fucking different water park. It, his ceiling is just so damn high. That doesn't mean that he's going to reach that at the pro level. But when I the more I looked into it, the more I'm watching it, I'm like, God damn it, these guys don't come around that often. It's a Russell Wilson situation. So let me let me hit you with a uh, an alternative line of thinking. So let's say at five, Miami goes offensive lineman. Two is on the yeah. board. They go O line. Nervous about. It. At eighteen, they go offensive line again. They trade up at twenty six. They go from to. They'd have to probably leapfrog New Orleans or New England. So we'll say they trade up to 21 with Philly or Jacksonville's other pick and for they love get Jordan Love. Yeah. How would that I would how be would you feel in that? It would feel really good to it would be it'd be a little better than I was very excited when they took Tannehill. I want to be clear on that. This is years ago now. He's like a 7-year vet or something like that, but mm -hmm. I was very excited when they took Tannehill. I've been excited draft wise with with that how they handled quarterback and I, I don't think Tannehill is a failure as a Miami Dolphin quarterback he he actually got I think into a playoff game and that's kind of a thing right it, there wasn't one before him since Pennington so I, I don't view him as a failure and there was excitement any quarterback that we've talked about thus far whether it was Herbert Love um Tua we're not getting Burrow um I even wouldn't hate Jalen Hurts. I, I'll be honest. I know that's its own hot take or whatever. There are enough talented guys that as long as we get a quarterback, I'm not going to be burning my gear. But if for some reason we're staring at Tua and they don't have a good reason not to take him, like that O-line versus situation, the fan base is going to have a tough time with it because – we want someone that can do the things that that guy can do. Now, Love can do some some of those things. Not all. Let's be real. There's certain guys better than other guys. Not everyone can do what Pat Mahomes can do. Not everyone can do what Lamar can do. Uh, to a degree, I think you could have said that about Aaron Rodgers, although he's coming towards the end, in my opinion, of what his capabilities were. His powers are diminished. I agree with that. Mike, how would you feel Miami at five does not go quarterback do you think that that's a risky move? Do you think that that's honestly something that pays off in this draft? A lot of talk is that there's a big three, and it's Herbert and Tua and Burrow. and But Love has been thrown into the mix recently. Jalen Hurts seems to be like one of the highest risers. Do you think maybe they, they roll the dice a little bit and, and wait till a little later in the draft? My thing is worry if, about you, it. <laughs> if you roll the dice, the, the dice roll has to be to 18. You can't go to that third pick in the first round um, which is why you specifically said they have to trade up because you know who seems like he would be perfect to come in and take over Belichick's offense is Jordan Love um, and the reason that I say that is because they're going to have a year to sit behind somebody and you know granted it's 
might be Jameis Winston. Who knows what they decide to do? Because I don't think Jarrett Stidham is yeah. really the guy for them. No, uh, because no. I believe as of right now, Jarrett Stidham is number one on their depth chart. Um, yeah, Hoyer's just, there. Hoyer's yeah. there, but I don't think he's. I think he's two. I think he. I think Again, Mike's that's right. Why I, I said two. Stidham's the number one on the depth chart. <laughs> Because uh, we're not you're you're getting what thirty four year old Brian Hoyer, not Hoyer oh, yeah. the Destroyer from Cleveland. So, <laughs> um, All right, but, yeah, so, but it's a it's a bold move. I, I don't think it's the right move, but it could happen. If you're in Miami, Mike, do you go to him at five? Uh, yeah, I do. It um, and my it moves reason the being, needle the right way. My reason is if he's healthy, which every uh, NFL doctor that's been able to check him out says that it looks like he's good. Uh, I mean, I watched a little bit of clips from his virtual pro day that he had. He was running around. He was doing bootlegs. You know, it, it looked like he had mobility. Um, Make boots. He, 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 as Brooks said here, um, and again, I, I don't like agreeing with you either, but he, uh, he moves the needle. It doesn't feel so good. So that's the right move. It doesn't feel good. The other thing is, yeah, Justin Herbert didn't have the best situation around him, but I was a re, uh, came across a statistic, and I my my actual numbers are not going to be accurate. My, my, I'm not going to say the numbers, but he was much more inaccurate than other quarterbacks when throwing at an open receiver. Um, I want to say that his completion percentage to an open receiver was like seventy three percent. He was missing wide open receivers frequently. Tua, Damn. Joe Burrow, they were not. Um, so mm. that's my problem. Granted, there was offensive line issues. There was definite wide receiver issues when it comes to Oregon. And Herbert did everything that he could to counteract that. But missing open receivers is something that you can't do at an NFL level. If you're missing a receiver who's wide open going one-on-one -on -one against one of the best cornerbacks in the league because he slipped and you missed that throw... You're going to hear about that for a long time, and that's going to make it for a rough NFL career. So uh, I think Tua Pat, is the, the right move. Pat, I'm so sorry. I actually was listening to him, which I shouldn't have been doing. That That's, that's a mistake. one. Should that's not have been mistake. listening to a goddamn thing he said. Second thing, I apologize. I missed a joke opportunity, and I'll give it to you right now. It's delayed. So I know that its effect was diminished because he was saying that he hates agreeing with me. And I agree with that statement. It feels so bad when we are on the same page. It must feel as bad as having sex with him. And we can we can attest. <laughs> we can ask that beautiful woman that was in the side frame. We can get her in and we can say, hey, hey, there must be other reasons. There must be other things because it can't feel good. It can't. It can't. It'd be like it would be like a water balloon that sat out in the sun for three days. So it was firm at some point, but now <laughs> it's, it's wilted. It's soft. I can't get it in all the way. He has to use two fingers to push it through. I'm Rope just technique. Saying, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was going to say, are we going to really start talking about our wieners here, Craig? Mr. <laughs> uh, at best is aggressively mediocre. Here's where you're wrong about that. He produced that. a child. Yes, it works. And yes, it works. <laughs> Nobody could. We, we, the, the jury was out on that. We thought for sure it was dead in there. But it, it works. It made something. <laughs> so <laughs> Works leaving, and enjoyable, though, are not the same conversation. That's true. I've that is a true statement. rarely cared about the joy for the other. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, so moving past the, uh, LA chargers, cause nobody cares about them. I want to talk about nobody. the Carolina Panthers, the chargers are gonna cam Newton list. I feel like we called this last year. If you go we back did. and watch, we thought the, the cam, everybody's attitude towards him was changing slightly and there was just kind of little signs. So I'm going to go to Craig, who has been one of the, you, well, I mean, both of you have been, but one of the staunchest Cam Newton non-believers like myself. Talk to me. What What's yeah. Carolina? They're, they're on the Teddy Bridgewater train, but what happened with that Cam Newton thing? And where would you see them going in this draft? They they made mistakes because they actually didn't get value for Cam, and they could have. And that that's something to be done with. And Dolphins know all about that. We, we took people on and paid a lot of people that – we're, we're never able to monetize what they were worth because part of this game is the business side of it. It's like if you're carrying contracts, you're doing things, finding ways to move them before you have to just release. 
you've got nothing, you know? And Carolina, I think, fixed where they're going. The Teddy Bridgewater situation is a, is a vast improvement because Cam, uh, I mean, maybe can't throw ever again. I'm not sure because we've not seen him pull his arm past here. We've never, we haven't seen it in a year. He, he can't do it. Physically, he's unable to do it. So I think you're looking at Carolina wide open, but that means you do a safe pick, right? When you're wide open, when you need a lot of things, you you shore up a line. You you get somebody or you get one of these amazing talents. There's a huge cornerbacks. There's a couple cornerbacks that are like supposed to be locked down, get you their guys. There's obviously a few tackles that are worth looking at. I, I think that they've got to go that way. They've got a young receiving core that could work with Teddy just fine, and Teddy will move that ball around. May, it's too early for running back. It is for for this class. And they have McCaffrey, can't. so why would oh, you even? Course. They just threw he funny just, money at him too. He did get paid, but I like that. And there's I actually a stamp. There's a Stanford running back come uh, another successful Stanford running back coming because did, didn't I think McCaffrey was Stanford also, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a Stanford guy also coming out that had a successful 2,000 yard year. So I think they've got to go either in that elite cornerback territory or just get you a line alignment. Just be safe here. You you did what you needed to do, but you missed the boat. You could have gotten real players or real value in picks for Cam Newton, you know, last year. Not so, not now. Mike, what does it look? What does Carolina look like this year? This is the first year they're without arguably some of the biggest faces in their franchise's history. Cam Newton, Luke Keekley, Greg Olson, all gone. Yeah. What does this team do? What do they look like this year? Give me a record prediction. Yeah, first time NFL head coach going to be relying on a surgically repaired knee of Teddy Bridgewater, um, who was serviceable, but proved that he's no Drew Brees while he was in New Orleans. Um, I it's think that you're looking. Yeah, I think you're looking at best Only Kurt maybe, Warner. Maybe six and ten at best. I, and that's I think that's high. I think that's, that's high. That's why Aren't we looking at Christian McCaffrey on the Larry Johnson train? The boy is given the ball four million times a season. Mm-hmm. That isn't good. I, it's good because he's fun to watch and I friggin' love him. I'm not saying I, I think he's phenomenal. Too many touches. Yep. There is a weird like just huge crevice on that career trajectory when their touches are that many in years in a row. And it's crazy. It's very Wes Welker rem, uh, reminiscent as well. Welker used to get, you know what he had three or four seasons of a hundred catches and then the concussions caught up to him running in the slot caught up to him. And then it was just like, mm, he can't see well anymore for his whole <laughs> life. He sees two of you always. Yeah. I mean, three seasons in Christian McCaffrey is the, I think maybe the second player ever is what they said to have 2,500 rushing and 2,500 receiving yards in their first three seasons. That stat is work. fucking amazing. It is. But Craig makes a great point. That many touches. You are so very oh, man. prone. There's Stroke. a possibility. <laughs> You got to be careful. It's more like uh, broken uh, uh, <laughs> You know what? Your head I can again go back to then. size doesn't matter because it works. It produced <laughs> it produced an alien unit. <laughs> Even though it so does look like cousin it only smaller. <laughs> he does have hair and that's a compliment. I'm spinning that motherfucker right around because you you're like, "You know off. what? You got to take that off. What I have, and what he has more hair than me. The boy has more hair than I do. <laughs> oh, God. Wait a minute. Oh, there's still none. <laughs> so, Arizona, it's a lock. You have to go offensive line here, right? Seeing Kyler last year be able to make all the throws. Is that electric talent Kyler's... you thought he was going to be? You got to go a line here, right? Sack 48 times is too many. Well, that, and you got to look at what what are, what are their other needs right Not now? enough. No. <laughs> like, they they have a lot of promising things, and then they also were man- somehow able to unload the massive David Johnson contract, keep Kenyon Drake, and get DeAndre Hopkins because yes. Houston's fucking the, dumb. The biggest jump I think should be uh, in in record the Cardinals and and what the productivity is going to be. I think they can double their win total and make the playoffs with just the moves they made because you're you again. This is a double way to we're, we're double ending dildoing each other. I agree with you that the Dutch move rudder, to un- baby. Dutch rudder. <laughs> the move to unload Johnson was so big. And I happen to like David Johnson. It's just Me not too. enough. 
not enough. And to get DeAndre, to get the arguably best wide receiver in the league, I don't have him as one, but he's so close. He's uh, he's up there. He's, he's up like there. A, you know. It, yeah, I know. It's really hard up there with. The, the talent that's in the league with Michael Thomas, with OBJ, who's diminished because of going to Cleveland, but we know what he's capable of. Like, there's a few guys that are worth talking about there. Arizona now has one of them, and they have this this young man, Kyler Murray, who I think I, I used the reference already, So I, but I can't go away from it just because of the talent pool. He's, he's a Russell Wilson-esque player. Th- those guys know how to win. They know how to move. He cannot get sacked that many times and have a 10-, 15-year career. You go O line, you go O line as much as you can, and you you give them cars, you pay them, you put them in your commercials, you do the Tom Brady, and you figure out how to make these boys love you because they can do shit with what they have as an infrastructure. Yep. So I'll tell you right now. I want just real quick. Uh, apparently, there's the betting line is the Cardinals over under is six and a half this year. Over. You're both going over. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I would hammer Gimme. the over on that. Gimme, gimme. I, I've been not illegally gambling lately, but I want it. I want it now. Well, it's because there's no <laughs> sports to gamble on. I know. I want to. Like I've been trying to test my wife. Like, okay, let's see which titty's gonna make the milk. All right, let's go. <laughs> so say, you Jacksonville. Start gambling on uh, esports, there, buddy. God, I wish I did better at video games when I was uh, a lad. Why wasn't I good? Uh, why didn't I focus on you making have a boy millions? Now. That's of what. Dollars? That's what. That's what no, he's but this here is for. before that. Well, if I I could have been. I was the generation that could have been like, I'll do only Halo. Don't speak with me. I'm going to become the best at this, or Counter Strike, or even Call of Duty. Which there are kids making millones on Call of Duty, and I missed it. Yeah, you went outside to play. That was your fault. Yeah, I fucking played football and hurt myself at the park. <laughs> like what the <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck was I thinking? So what does Jacksonville do here at nine? Do you guys, they, they seem, they, they trash Nick Foles. He's gone. He's out. Yeah, garbage. He's, Minshew is in. Do you think there's a potential Bowl landing spot garbage. for Jameis Winston? Do you think this is a Cam Newton spot? They're going to ride with Minshew. What are they? Their defense still formidable, still a, a yeah. solid defense. Where do well, you go if you're Jacksonville? I'll start here because right now there's two big names that are on the trading block right now for draft weekend in Jacksonville. One of them being Yannick Ngakwe, who we mentioned. Uh, The other one being Leonard Fournette is someone who they're supposedly shopping around. Um, You and I said last year, uh, Pat, that we both thought that the best scenario in the draft would have been for the Jacksonville Jaguars before they signed Foles to trade Carolina for Cam Newton. We both thought that would have made sense. I still think that move would have made sense. And I will find it hilarious if they signed Cam Newton this year. Um, but based on where things are at in the draft right now with, um, we haven't mentioned Isaiah Simmons enough yet. And based on the, how this first nine pick mock has gone, I I don't think that you could pass him up if he's still there because this guy, but you don't, you don't think he will be though. I don't, I I, see it in your face. I don't think he will be, but with the way that we've talked so far today, he is. Chargers of Carolina could easily take him. He, but it wouldn't he, shock us if they did, is what I think Pat's yeah, saying there. Exactly. But uh, that's my thing, is if Isaiah Simmons is here, he is the freak athlete of the draft because of the fact that he can play linebacker, he can play edge, he can play safety, he can play nickel corner. He is a outside linebacker who runs a 4 3 8 40. Like, do you know how terrifying that sounds to have this guy sprinting at you jacked as a motherfucker and literally just could tear your head off without even thinking about it? If he Um, falls there, it's a boon. It's a huge boon to a defense that already is, like Pat said, formidable. The problems on that team are just they can't they they cannot score. Two years ago, they cannot move the ball and they you cannot have your defense on the field for 40 minutes, you, you just can't do that in, in the game and expect to win. I, I think you're right that based on what we're saying, though, he would fall there. It's just, that seems unlikely. He's very, uh, it, it's the talent level so high that some people feel like he should have been a one, but it's not going to happen because of who's up there. So moving on from, from Jacksonville, because I don't want to spend too much time on them. I 
I'm just going to kind of pick and choose moving forward, kind of who we're, we're discussing next. And I think Cleveland, Jets, Vegas are all toolsy kind of guys. Uh, Vegas could could make a, a move for Herbert there. He, he could definitely fall there. But the one that's, that's interesting to me is San Francisco. San Francisco at 13, just in a Super Bowl, I think also could go wide receiver. But yeah. right behind them, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bray. Tampa Bay should, and I don't think they will, uh, if they have access to a quarterback, should be considering that. Brady is not playing forever. It's just like the Saints targeting Love and targeting some of these other quarterbacks. It's a smart play when you do an Aaron Rodgers, when you put, like Green Bay did, when you bring him in, when you already have something else. No, he doesn't like it. I'm not trying to say that these Young men like coming in and not starting. But the proof is in that many of these successful quarterbacks didn't necessarily start. Uh, Pat Mahomes didn't start when he first came in. There is a benefit to that, the learning. You get you get such a special attention from the coach while someone else is leading the offense, that, that veteran person. What better person to learn from? And not because he's going to be a nice guy. Like the historically Favre was like a dick to Rogers. I get that. And I think Brady would be just the same, but you learn from you watching, you learn from behavior. And that would be to me, the bucks putting a long-term investment in their franchise because Brady's of right now, Brady's a, maybe he gets him there this year or next year, but are you the Toronto Raptors? Are you trying to win one now and then never again forever? Or are you trying to build something where you might get lucky this year or next year with a 43-year-old, but you also want your young gun to go, oh, that's how I'm supposed to do that? That's what work ethic looks like? So for me, their opportunity is too high not to. I just don't think they're going to do it. Well, I mean, I think the is, proof is in the pudding for that as you look at San Francisco with Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think that just that backs your argument further. But go ahead, Mike. No, no, I like what you're saying. It's just your I think what it, the, the issue that you're happening ha- having right now is that you're a little early on it. Um, I don't think it happens in the first round. I think True. in the second round, they could draft a, a Jalen Hurts if he's there. Uh, I don't think he will be. I think he'll go earlier than pick 46, which is yeah, probably I where think, they're at. Um, yeah. they, they could probably go from or Eason. Uh, as that person but if tom brady is here now and you got him on a two-year deal you got to protect him um so they have to go best offensive lineman available take that keep tom brady upright uh and then if they don't in the second round if they don't go quarterback um they got to take one of these stud running backs that are undervalued for some reason because whether it be dobbins whether it be acres whether it be uh taylor whether it be edwards alaire you need to Swift. give a running game to Tom Brady. Swift, that's the one that I'm forgetting, DeAndre Swift. There's like um, five, but, yeah. but running back doesn't matter these days, which is a nope. miss, by the way, because look at McCaffrey. Look at what a good running back can – well, they're not winning the games yet, but the foundationary piece of having like a stud running back and an excellent defense, you you win. You go to yeah. the playoffs. That was the I, problem I, that ended up happening with the Giants last year. Saquon got hurt early in the season. Granted, we had our, enough of our problems. We weren't going to win games. But he got hurt early in the season, came back not 100%, and it took him another five weeks to get completely healthy. And then the right. last two games of the season went off because you could tell I that he could him. finally run and pivot. I love him so much. You guys love him more because he's on your team, but I love him. I love him. I want him to stay healthy. I want him to be in this league longer than – the position he's at. And that's what makes me nervous right now because Frank running backs just Frank Gore it. Do it, right? It's, I think he'll yep. be strong enough to be able to pull off something like that. He won't have the speed forever, but tackling this guy's a nightmare. I hope he and McCaffrey can be long term players. Like technically Adrian Peterson had a nice, you know, run. I, I want now. that. He is, he is. And he was so exciting to watch. And both McCaffrey and Barkley are, but Barkley has that something otherworldly that is like, I don't see a running back this year's draft that even looks like that. You don't see guys like that in 10 year cycles. And that's like, keep him healthy, do what you can. The giants, again, you guys know have other issues, but that ain't one of them, man. He is fan friggin' tastic. We love him in the Brooks house. (laughs) I'll say, uh, do you have anything else on Tampa, Mike? Uh, No, I was just going to, 
kind of follow up. I'm like, and the other thing about Saquon is he just seems like such a likable person. Oh like, yeah, 100%. give him more sponsorship money. Chunky Soup is like low level, low hanging fruit. Give him some Gatorade of the good him shit. Up. Yeah, Gatorade, Gatorade and Nike. Yes. Well, Best I'm smile in saying, the game. No, no he's got I a think... custom Nike apparel line already. Now wait, I want to buy stuff from it. I want to show. You think Gatorade and Nike are one, but I don't think so for for the money because Nike. If you're not Michael Jordan and you're not the tippy top, they're Nike. They can say, fuck you. I think the insurance companies is where the real money is. Give <laughs> Saquon. I'm serious. I, who Who's doing it? Peyton, Aaron, your quarterbacks, who gets paid the most? Give Saquon freaking insurance money. He's got the beaming <laughs> smile. He's handsome. He's got the thighs that are as big as my whole body. Everybody That's wins. Insane. Everybody wins if you put Saquon on – all state or one of the big ones. Give him Geico. Fuck the fuck the gecko. Give it the Saquon. I need it. This is now just a Saquon Barkley appreciation podcast. We've switched He's at the so hour mark. We're watch. going. He's amazing. He's so fun to watch. I I mortgage my future in multiple fantasy leagues to maintain him even through that rough year because he showed what he's capable of in the end, a healthy Saquon, there is not a better running back in the league. What other position could you say that with with conviction. I'm being honest. Like you can't without him being injured, he's 100% number one at wide receiver. You, you can't, you can't really say Mike Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, these guys is too close quarterback. You even have a tough time. Pat Mahomes for sure is everybody's going to say that, but you've got other guys that are close. And I think you could argue Lamar Russell Wilson's also someone who he's, he's had, I mean, you guys know, and can, can, you know, say this as verification, but I've been saying Russell Wilson's been an underrated top five quarterback for the last 10 years. I think it you're hasn't right been now. that long, I've but I've been, around I've been it. saying you're it for right. a yeah. very long time. He's been willing those Seahawks teams to victory because they're not that good. They're not, they're not good. They, they bring on people that don't have all their limbs. Like that's not smart. You shouldn't do that. Oh. What? <laughs> no, I actually, he's like, our, he's you know, our boy. <laughs> I know. I just so, took a, I took an opportunity. I don't. We I don't, were. I don't feel we good about. We were just it. talking about wonderful wide receivers. Love that because this feeds in very perfectly. Are the Atlanta Falcons this bad? Picking 16 in the middle. Was this an aberration? Was this the start of the decline for Matt Ryan? Mike, what was this? What was the season from Atlanta? This year was an enigma. I think is a good way to describe it. Who is coaching in Atlanta right now? I literally have no idea. Give me a second. Your That's mom. part of the problem. What? <laughs> oh, she is a pleasant lady and a saint, so go fuck yourself. Kindly. Technically, that is a compliment. When I say your mom is one of 32 well-paid individuals in these United States, how dare you, sir? Still Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn. Still Dan Quinn. Okay, that's, yeah, because I, I, I think that he is a hot seat person this year. Oh, oh my God, yes. Oh, my like God. His, yes. his seat might be the hottest going into the season. So um, close from the Super Bowl. You, you, I can't believe they're doing, they're, they performed that way. So, so actually, close from being in a Super Bowl. Yeah, because I think that they, they're still a very good team. They still have a lot of good parts. They added Todd Gurley, which I think is going to uh, help help their running game immensely. They still got Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. They have a great receiver core. Uh, they did uh, lose a tight end who I believe is um, with the Giants. With the Giants, yeah, now, uh, low, low. Austin Hooper. Hooper, right? Yeah. Well, Hooper's gone, Hooper. but they still have Hooper. Hooper. They, they, did Hooper? No, he went. He he left. He got a money. He got a a. a I think he got a, like a, a favorable deal. Okay. Um, so, I mean, tight end's an area of need, but there's no huge tight ends this year. Austin Hooper's a Brown. Yeah. And Tololo is on the Giants. Tololo, that's who the, went to the Giants. Yeah. But I think he was actually gone a year ago. Um, they can get rookie, rookie tight ends are making such a difference these days. They can draft someone that's, that's hungry as hell. I think Atlanta needs defensive help. They lost a lot of games because, yes, the offense wasn't clicking that way, but that offense has elite people at multiple positions. And did did they retain Devonta while they brought Gurley in? Believe they so. do have Devonta, yes. Well, damn it. That that's that's very promising. If if health can be at a hundred, you've got like our our mutual friend Reggie is a is an Atlanta fan, and I hit him up when Gurley went there, and I said, "Give me your excitement on a scale of one to ten. He's like, "I'm." I'm being cautious, but I'm at the 9-10 range. Like, 
Todd Gurley had a, a physical ailment last year. Like that, we know that. If that is fixed, they got what used to be before Saquon came to town, <laughs> the guy. And Saquon and McCaffrey, I would still take over Gurley all day, but a healthy Gurley, holy shit. Atlanta could run the ball in a way that minimizes what Matt Ryan has to do. So even if he's aging, it won't fucking matter. So he can Devonta that Freeman, off. just to jump in, Devonta Freeman is a free agent. They cut him. Uh, oh, and their dear. tight end currently is Hayden Hurst, former first round pick of the Baltimore Ravens. They got him in a trade, I believe. Yeah. A couple years ago was the shit was the next big tight end is what everyone was saying. So that's interesting as well. That Devonta thing is a bummer, though. That takes what I just said and turns it into poo-poo sauce. But I don't here's what, necessarily what agree I with think, that. Though. I think Gurley can carry an offense, even if you only if need healthy. him to do it for this year. If healthy, right. he can do that. I'm going to get the a The other beer. thing that I will uh, – yeah, go for it. Um, but the other thing that I will say, too, to keep in mind, uh, the hunger level of Gurley. Gurley's coming home, man. you got to remember – University of Georgia, like yeah, he might. I believe he's a Florida boy, but man, he was a dog, and he's going back to the going back to playing in Georgia. I have a feeling that he's going to welcome putting on that red and black with open arms, and he is going to be hungry. Um, I for, also for think he's going to have a a chip on his shoulder too, because what for two sure. years ago there was a talk, there was talk of him being the the best running back in football, and yeah. he's gone so far from that that peak to now being. What is, you know, Los Angeles feels like they can move on without him where, you know, he was an integral part of that offense. And and last year they kind of disappeared without him. I think that that's more indicative of what L.A. actually is than it is what Todd Gurley is. No, I want to move on interesting and talk about uh, our our favorite our favorite whipping boys in Minnesota. I love to just shit talk Kirk Cousins. So they lose (laughs) they lose. Some wide receiver depth to Buffalo. I don't fully understand that. Here, here's uh, my thing. I'll, no, I'll say they dodged the, the, that Buffalo is smart here because they dodged a bullet. They got a receiver who wanted to leave, and his name is an Antonio Brown. Because <laughs> remember those rumors last year? We were all talking about it. Oh, that that God. trade was finalized. You got Stefan Diggs, who is fucking pumped to be there, and he's fast as hell. So I don't know if Josh Allen can overthrow him. So. <laughs> That's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to watch. But Minnesota, are they? What are you looking for here? If you're if you're the Vikings, are you looking wide receiver? Are you looking potentially past Kirk Cousins into the next realm of of quarterbacks? What is? Are you looking at offensive line? I feel like all of their needs are very offensive and not as defensive. You could also go corner late because I know they lost Xavier Rhodes. You know, see, you make a, a great point that I think not enough people are talking about. Kirk Cousins is going into the final year of his contract. He got that uh, big three-year, ninety million, completely guaranteed, do- you know, contract. Uh, and this is this is year three, you know. So this is year three, and what have you shown for it? Did I believe they made the playoffs once? Yeah, made the playoffs and last once, year was and then not great for most. Last of the year, year was bad was bad you made the playoffs the first year that he was there and then you got knocked out um to new orleans on the minneapolis miracle um but you still got dalvin cook you still got adam thielen kyle rudolph is still a good tight end but you need receiver help you need offensive line help probably could use a cornerback you have a good defense they have a good team it's just it didn't come together for them last year I think their biggest need right now could be wide receiver. And I could see them doing that because they decided to trade Stefan Diggs for whatever reason. Um, I, I'm like I said, he wanted out, but I mean, dude, pay the man, talk him into staying. Come on. He's one of the best parts of your franchise. Um, but uh, I don't know. It made Buffalo increasingly more interesting this year for me. Buffalo, definitely an exciting, exciting to see what they're going to have this year, but Minnesota, are they good enough to get past the Packers? Are they good enough? I think even the Lions a little bit aren't a three and twelve and one team. I don't think that that's what they are at the end of the day. So yeah. are the Vikings good enough to run away with this division and also secure a wild card again? That's that's the thing that I'm not sure Kirk Cousins brings that for you at, at this point. Kirk Cousins is at best a wild card quarterback, and that's just and a it, fact. He might get I mean, you to the wild card. He could potentially go on a an. E, I think he has the capability to go on an Eli Manning esque 
postseason streak to where he could get you to a Super Bowl. But you got to know that he's still not he you're still going to be clawing in the regular season to make the playoffs um, and have to hope that he goes full freak Manning and gets you to a Super Bowl once you get there. Um, do I see that happening? No. Could it happen? Anything's possible. You know, do you see and, and I we're, we jumped to Minnesota at 25. I want to go back a couple. Do you see New England at 23 going or I'm sorry, 22 is Minnesota. 23, uh, New England taking a quarterback. Do you is this is it Tom Brady replacement time? Do you think Jared Stidham is going to be the guy for them moving forward? I mean, if you're going in this situation, they haven't signed anybody yet. Um, I think that if they're going to sign a quarterback, um, Cam Newton is not a Belichick guy. Um, I don't think Jameis Winston necessarily is either, but I can 100% see Jameis Winston signing and playing in New England. Um, with that being said, I think you have to draft a quarterback here because no matter who you sign, you're signing somebody with question marks. You're not no you're you're not signing someone that you know is going to be a guarantee plug in and he's our guy for five years and we're back to Super Bowl glory. Um, and since you don't know that, you have to future proof yourself. You got to sign yourself a quarterback. That's got to be what you do if you are Bill Belichick and the Patriots. All spooked. Can't hear shit. Rut row. So who do you envision? Who's the best fit at quarterback for the New England Patriots in this draft? And could it be possible that they move up? Not really big on moving draft capital. They're very bang for your buck. But do you think that they could move up in this draft? Oh, they move draft capital. They just move it back. They, 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 they move, they move backwards, not forwards. Um, I think that if they want to get a, a top quarterback in this draft, they would have to move up the likelihood that there's going to be a quarterback for them here is at best Jordan love more likely Jake Eason, Jake Eason or uh, Jake Fromm. Um, I, I don't know if at 23 Jordan love is still going to be there. Cause I wouldn't be surprised if uh, new Orleans supposedly having their eyes set on him. If that is to be true, I wouldn't be surprised if new Orleans trades ahead to a uh, trains ahead to try and get a piece of them and get Jordan love to be the guy to be the predecessor to drew Brees, Um and, and go that Patrick Mahomes esque path sit for a full year. Drew Brees calls it a career and then takes over. Um, so I, I think that if they were to move forward, it's going to be for Jordan love. I still just don't see them doing it. And I, I, I that's where I think the problem would be. Um, so I, I think that they don't go that way. Instead, they sign Jameis Winston and then try and maybe trade up and draft like a Jalen Hurts in the second round uh, and, and groom Jalen Hurts to be better than Jameis Winston like we all know he will be. It's, it's hard to disagree with that statement. It's hard <laughs> to disagree there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're actually going to break this podcast into two different parts. Uh, Craig had some audio issues, and it's actually a really good split. So the first half, we really just talk about uh, draft prospects and what we think the draft is going to be next week. And uh, afterwards, it's more NFL talk, still a little bit of draft stuff. But uh, yeah, we're going to split it up into two different podcasts that we're going to release on two sequential days. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And I just wanted to jump in and let you guys know that that was what was going on. Thanks.